Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is David Sembe. I'm head of the policy and analysis division at the APO. Thank you for joining us today. Today, I invited a really interesting and insightful speaker and expert. Actually, he's the investor. Uh, the company name is Incubate Fund. As you know, as an entrepreneur and as a startup, especially at the early stage, if we don't have attraction or if we don't have revenues, profits, it's extremely difficult for actually the getting the investment. But then if you have investment uh, at the early stage, that will be great. So what if you meet like investors who uh, prefer to invest at the startup companies at the early stage? Incubate Fund is the company, venture capital company. So today I invited founder and CEO of Incubate uh, Fund in Japan, so Masaiko Honma-san. So uh, thank you very much for your time, Honma-san. Could you introduce yourself a little bit and your company also? Uh, my name is Masahiko Honma, the founder and general partner of the Incubate Fund. The Incubate Fund is the largest C-stage venture capital fund in Japan. The having the operation in the United States, the Southeast Asia, and the India as well. The, we, we have been very focused for the seed stage investment into the tech startups in Japan. We have been uh, investing over 300 startups to date for the past 10 years. And uh, besides the pure direct investment, uh, we are doing the fund of funds investment to support young venture capitalists to grow. The, I started my career at the company called Jafco. It's the uh, largest venture capital group in Japan. And then I uh, started working for the Accenture, the venture capital division, and the Mitsubishi Corporation, and also the doing my job in, at the venture capital. So the, for the past 20 years on over, I've been doing the venture capital business only in Japan and uh, globally. Uh, Honma-san, I have a question about, before we go into the detailed discussion, that uh, why the startup companies are so important for innovation. The reason is because, as you know, you have been working for big companies, but then you decide to become an investor, and then you try to find the startup companies at the early stage, and you invest in them, which can be very also challenging and risky. But there must be some reasons why you decide to do it. And more than anything else, when we talk about innovation, why we talk about startups together? Uh, being in the startup and the venture capital industry over the 20 years and over, I uh, really uh, get to my uh, belief and the conviction more The all the time the innovations happens from the outside, not the central. Outsider is always the uh, central part of the innovation. The, it's also the, it is also the said that the, uh, there are many cases of the innovator dilemma. The, looking back for the past 20 years in the tech scene in Japan and Asia, I'm seeing the many cases of the innovator dilemma happened to date. Taking an example of the mobile gaming market that we saw in the China, Korea and Japan, the most of the major player are not from the uh, console game and uh, arcade game field. Even in Japan, the, there are many good uh, big names like uh, a console player like uh, Nintendo, Sega, Sony, etc. But the mobile gaming market have been driven by the uh, startup players. And another example that I'm seeing this, for instance, the, in the healthcare field as well, is that one of the, our investing companies that went public, uh, the company called Medray, was, is the leading uh, innovator in the telemedicine platform provider. Uh, they are the, also the startup. Telemedicine, the platform itself, has not come from the, uh, let's say, the uh, central place of the medical industry. That this come from the uh, started uh, use at the uh, just uh, let's say diagnosis for the patient in the rural area or the small uh, island in the patients. But this uh, type of the innovation just come from the uh, very uh, far away from the central market as well as uh, provided by the startup player. 
and now they are then the ma major platform provider in this field, for instance. So the, uh, my feeling is the, uh, the people in the center and the main field, the, most of them, they notice that the innovation, the opportunity are there mm -hmm. or happening. But the, the, because of their, let's say, the environment they sit in, they knew it, but they couldn't work it. Or the, the initial uh, size of the innovation in the market is uh, too small. They sometimes uh, pass this out. And then the, uh, this opportunity and market are growing after. That's my feeling through my experience in the BC business and the startup business, in the, especially in the tech field. So uh, Incubate Fund actually has invested in more than 300 startups in the seed phase, which can be very risky, as I said. So how did you learn to trust your judgment? Because when you try to invest in the startup companies at the early phase, it just means that they don't have anything. You just see the founders and their ideas for products or services, and then they don't have attractions, and then they don't have the revenues. So how do you actually make a good judgment about uh, whether I'm going to invest in this company or not. I and me made a lots of lots of mistakes for sure. And uh, still the, we, we are, and I'm learning the, how we are gonna judge to make a good investment and the best investment into the startup in the really early and the seed stages. So I feeling that the most the important thing to the, for the judge to invest into the C stage or early stage entrepreneur is the founder's market fit. Uh, it is always discussed and talk about the product market fit is the really important to pass the initial stage of the startups. But uh, at the same time, the, I really believe that the founder fit the market they are in. Business opportunity and the market opportunity uh, also the fits their founders' capability and the background. So this is uh, really uh, the point that uh, I always checking for the investment judgment. The, in most of the cases, uh, when we invest in a startup, the seed stage, there's uh, no product, no service launched, and no revenue, and uh, no profit. And uh, the, then the uh, what we just invest based on the team's capability and the commitment is the first sense. And also the second part is the uh, assumption or business opportunity, how this business opportunity will evolve based on this team and the technology. The biggest uh, judgment point we trust for the past 10 years and over. On the other hand, the, as, as you said that the seed stage investment is a really risky, is a, we of course understand that. At the same time, the seed stage investment, uh, the, we invest from the day one, means that the, in terms of the stock prices we will get uh, into is the lowest ever. After we invest into a startup, of course we keep helping and supporting this startup to grow to the next stage, but the, we take a risk at the same time in, almost the same time with a founder, mean that the, we have set up and build up some sort of the trust ship together between the founder and the investor. That I think is a really feel safe for us sometimes for an investor to uh, know everything from the day one about the founder and the startup and the business opportunity, all of them. So the seed stage investment is risky, of course. At the same time, we know uh, everything experience together from the day one is uh, really the safe, uh, make us feel safe for us as well. We are going to talk a lot more about uh, successful examples or cases that you have, but let's start with the failures. There must be uh, many mistakes and failures and errors, and also that you trust the founders because you believe that they are really good, but then they might have disappointed you also. So let's say that uh, you trust some people that actually you shouldn't have trusted, or mm -hmm. you thought that it's really good potential, but you invested it, but actually turned out that actually they are nothing but just failures. So could you share your 
that kind of cautionary tales were some painful uh, failure stories, which, even though it's not that easy for you to talk about it. Uh, again, the, I've experienced a lot of, a lot of failure into the startup. So this is uh, all about the venture capital business and the startup business. The, I think the, there are two kinds of failure for uh, investor and the venture capital. One is the, uh, we miss the really big win in the after. Uh, we miss opportunity of the good one is a really uh, failure for a venture capital business. I'm thinking example of the two cases. The one is a company called the Mercari. It's uh, one of the really big hit IPO in the past three, four years in Japan market. Mercari is a C2C marketplaces uh, operator and the provider in the company. The reason I missed this opportunity is CEO and the founder of Mercari is uh, too close to me. Is uh, he is a friend of mine in a startup world. Sometimes uh, we tend to uh, make a misjudgment to the uh, closer people and the friends founder because uh, we we know too much about his characteristic and uh, capability. You now as a founder and as a person. The sometimes uh, in this circumstance, uh, people sometimes tend to see more on the point uh, he's not good at rather than that he's really good at. So then, then the, I think is uh, he is really talented. And uh, of course, uh, I knew he's a really successful entrepreneur. But at the same time, the, because of the relationship between the, he and me, uh, I think that, oh, the, he's a really good friend, but the, I passed this opportunity. But the, in the end, is the Mercari was not, uh, uh, this is a really big, big failure to me. The Mercari is now valued the six, seven billion US dollars and over. It's one of the most successful, uh, tech startup for the past four years, four or five years in the decent uh, tech scene in Japan. Another case is a company called Laksuru. Laxru is a B2B uh, online printing company. Uh, given that I used to invest into the company called uh, Monotaro, it's uh, another B2B uh, marketplace company in Japan. Now the, they are valued at 10 billion US dollars and over. They are really successful B2B uh, marketplace company. Given that I have invested experience into Monotaro, and they already knew the uh, what kind of business model and the structure works on the B2B field. Then the when I saw the first phase of the Laksu, is uh, it looks really premature, even the both for the founder and the business model. So the just because of the I sometimes also the investor sometimes knew know the uh, business domain too much and uh, have the experience too much on the sp some specific business domain. Uh, the investor and uh, we tend to uh, pass the opportunity. And then the, this was also the failure that Laksuru is a uh, went public and uh, have been successfully growing and close to 1 billion uh, US dollars as a variation in Japan market. Investor missed the tremendous and potential opportunity and this uh, missed the deal and the opportunity grows after tremendously. Another big failure is uh, apparently the really promising startup and keep growing. And uh, because of the competition, then burn out and fail. This is a case I'm taking is the uh, company called the Origami. It's a QR payment company, has been very successful at growth for the past seven, eight years. And also the origami is one of the innovator and the market leader to create the QR code, the cashless payment market in Japan after seeing the uh, case like uh, WeChat Pay and Alipay in China. The, I'm feeling that the, uh, it's not the, I think uh, the mistake, but the, I think that if we investor and the founder just agree and uh, understand the market competitive situations better and deeper, uh, we can sell the uh, company and uh, startup earlier before 
the IT giants like、uh, SoftBank or m e l c a r i or KDDI as a good、uh, big name of the payment space comes. So the, if the, the lesson learned from this type of the failure is、uh, in the case that the, if there's a, already the case, success case, and the proven model in the other market, if the big corporation、uh, spent too much money to、uh, destroy the market, to catch up the、uh, fast mover, sometimes the startup side fail, not the、uh, big corporation, the large corporation side. This is a bit obvious, but sometimes investors and the founder、uh, cannot make a right judgment being the center of the competition. So that's my、uh, lesson learned from the case like Origami. Let me move on to the next question. So, how do you identify excellent entrepreneurs or startups at the early stage? You just told us that how you failed、uh, to see the great、uh, entrepreneurs or startups. Or also at the same time, how you made a mistake. So now,、um, when you see those startup companies at the early stage, as we discussed before already, that what do you see in them? How do you know they are going to be a big、uh, success later?、Uh, taking the case that we see in the common feature of the successful founder, is, I think it's、uh, three kinds. Uh, one is the、uh, founder's commitment to a business and the business opportunity. This is sometimes very interesting. Is the,、uh, the commitment level is not relevant to the founder's age. The young people sometimes too much commitment, or some very, let's say, the experienced founder also they make a commitment to an opportunity. So, most likely, the, the commitment is、uh, really related to the personal、uh, passion, to the opportunity and the problem、uh, he or the C wants to take or C wants to solve. The first point is、uh, really the commitment.、Uh, second point is、uh, the, especially from now and the, especially for the recently, and the more and the more、uh, specialty. Or technological skill or deeper knowledge, like、uh, expertise, I mean, taking much more important for the successful entrepreneur. So, the before, the, for instance, the、uh, internet the opportunity we see in the gaming or internet media, internet advertisement, entertainment, is the,、uh, this is a really new market for the everybody. So, the, the young founder. Sometimes can be very successful in this field because、uh, he has the commitment and guts and the hard working and do、uh, testing and、uh, rotate the PDCA cycle faster than the others. Then they success. But the thing from the、uh, recent investment I'm doing this is、uh, more and more、uh, expertise, technological expertise, especially for a specific industry. Going to be much, much more required for the successful founder. Third point is the energy as a startup. It is a really limit,、uh, related to the commitment, but the startup, the founder, has to work harder than the、uh, normal phases. And then the,、uh, the keep the、uh, founder and the founder team the energetic than the Uh, any, anyone else is also that I'm checking to make a judge of the excellent founder from day one. Which sectors have you mainly been interested in, and could you tell us why? There have been a lot of the、uh, different and the sifting for the past 20 years the, where I have been investing and、uh, is interested in g t o the、uh, founder and the tech startup.、Uh, There have been a lot of the shift and change.、Uh, we have been investing and interested as a market opportunity and a business opportunity. The 10 years back and the 15 years back, the, we and I have been investing a lot of the gaming and the internet and the internet media and the advertising sector、uh, because 
the that the field where the innovation happened a lot. But since then, the uh, the gradually this the internet market and the gaming market getting saturated, especially in, in Japan's market. Uh, now the I'm investing more for the SaaS B two B SaaS startups, deep tech, life science, life, life science and biotechnology. And also the another uh, we call the public sector, mean that the uh, vertical industry like uh, transportation, uh, medical, uh, fi financial, the where the some sort of a regulator and the governor are there to control the industry. But this type of the big big industries are regulated, but they're having a deep market potential. The where the we can transform this type of the big in industry by the uh, information technology and the deep technology. Now we are seeing more for the deep tech and life science and biotech and uh, uh, big vertical the, where the technology is really under saw. But again, in the computer science and the data business is the uh, central uh, innovation driver. The before, the, this type of the data and the computer science has been applied to the uh, internet or some other uh, consumer facing uh, industry. But now this type of the computer science and the data business is uh, starting to apply to the uh, life science and biotech or the public sector as well. I think that in terms of B2B, the SaaS market, I think Japan market has a really good potential the now in the, the SaaS market, uh, Japan is the second largest market uh, still. And uh, there are a lot of the uh, really complicated industry structure of the uh, B2B system integration solution. But the, we will see a lot of the ample opportunity to replace this on-premise or complicated uh, system int integration work by the uh, SaaS. By seeing a lot of the innovation happening in the US in the SaaS market, uh, we will see the similar opportunity happening in the in Japan. Also, the, I think that we will see the similar movement in China and India as well. So based on your experience, so when you see the startup companies who attract the investors and those startup companies actually cannot attract the investors, there must be some differences when you see them. It's all about the uh, founder's team, how strong, how balanced they are. Now is the investor's money is everywhere. Is the money chasing, money always chasing the good founder team and the good market opportunity. But always the, uh, the startup who can attract good money and uh, not so difference from the others are uh, the startup who have a really good uh, founder team. The balance between the CEO, CFO, a CTO, and uh, some other key personnel is uh, uh, the really experienced and uh, excellent person, attract the excellent person. This is uh, really the, from the, uh, how we put up the brick from the scratch and the day one. In the basement is weak. In the end, the, this, uh, the pile of the brick collapse after, if the start, uh, startup grow. Likewise, uh, the startup is uh, very similar to the uh, basement itself is really uh, critical for the future success that investor always see this. And also the, at the same time, the, uh, I'm always seeing, and also the investor always seeing the, uh, how we, control and plan the money and the resource allocation for the short term and long term. That if we, the startup too much focus for the short term and to care about the traction and numbers only, sometimes they, uh, these type of team tend to miss the long term vision, how they scale, what kind of uh, objective they will have. So this is also the uh, important factor at the same time. But it's really the, I mean, the difficulty uh, 
question and the issue, how they balance the long-term plan and the short-term plan by the, within the limited budget and the resources, also the, within the limited time frame. But good startup and the excellent founder uh, tend to be very good at managing both. That's my feeling. Um, let's talk about the business model because no matter how hot the products or services they might have, at the end of the day, if they don't have a good business model or if they don't have a good revenue model, uh, they are not going to actually make a good profits and they are not going to make it as a company. Maybe you can share that what is the best uh, business model or uh, revenue model that you have ever seen so far? And then also you can share that what direction is the best for the startup companies when it comes to the business model or revenue model? Uh, let me take an example of the uh, my portal company, a uh, company called the Bellface. is a, a sales tech company, uh, sales tech and SaaS company. The which is the I think the now is the fast growing SaaS startups in Japan right now. Uh, Bellface uh, provide the uh, sales tech to the outbound sales tech to the, which is a bit similar to the uh, Skype and the Zoom, but they, they don't count on the uh, video uh, communication. They still count on the uh, telephone line to make a call call to the client. And if the potential client pick up the call, the, the, the sales person that tells some sort of the specific number to put this into the uh, website. And then the screen, screen share uh, they can do. The, this is a really specified to the outbound sales for the doing remotely. The, I think the beauty of this business model is uh, firstly, they're, of course, they are the SaaS company. Their, let's say, subscription business model is a really works. The second point is uh, their client uh, the need to target for the uh, offline client, where the, those of the people are not good at the caring and handling the cutting edge technology. That's why they still keep using the telephone line. But the most of the innovation, the market opportunity tend to happen into the rural area or the senior market as such, but the uh, internet player they have to sometimes to cover and reach that market so that there's a really good market opportunity. And some point I would like to stress is that this is a, this mechanism has some sort of the virality because the, uh, the client uh, who just received the call from the bell face always thinking what type of this service is this, that they are curious. Client side, who also the, uh, to receive the sales call from the uh, Bellface user can be the another Bellface users. This is a bit similar to the, how the virality works in the case of the Skype, in the case of the Zoom. It's a, all the B2B product, but has some sort of the virality as a product. That the, I think the business model I'm recently feel, oh, it's a really good and working. As an incubate fund itself, so you must have a, some value proposition or you must have your own like a philosophy. I don't think that you are just doing this only just to make a profit and just want to be rich. Could you share your own like a philosophy for this investment? And then what motivates you to wake up every morning? I'm going to do this today. Like uh, as a company, maybe you must have your own value proposition. Uh, yeah, surely. The, I don't recommend the the people uh, who are looking for to be a venture capitalist to make a money, because uh, there are much much more better way to make a money as a way of fun. But the I really like this business model and the venture capital business. The one of the value proposition. And uh, of the incubate fund is the as name that indicates uh, the we we never ever uh, investment into the proven successful startup from the middle. We always uh, make an investment into the company formation stage or the seed stage. 
So we have the corporate motto of the first round and lead position. We never ever invest into any startup in case uh, we cannot be the first outside investor to a startup and cannot take a lead position. We always to try to be the best supporter to our founder and the startup team and uh, expand together in the good time, the hard time together and then make a success together. That's my aim and the intention. And also the, I think the, some sort of certain philosophy to uh, do a venture capital job. Some startup company entrepreneurs are initially confident that they won't need any investment funding. But then when they start struggle financially, they realize that they need investment actually. So this is what I have seen uh, myself that in person, that when the startup company is doing great, they think that why do I need uh, investment? They think that they are doing great. So they don't want to invite investors. But then, uh, as you can see, that the, their, their growth actually looks great. But when they start struggling, um, their growth is actually doesn't look good. And then that's when they start looking for a fund. And then for investors, of course, they are not attractive because they are suffering. So in a way that maybe uh, it's not necessarily because they are desperate for money. They must have some like a long-term plan for investment that it's not because they don't have money, it's because strategically they might need some money for some time for the future. And then uh, maybe it's better for them to get some investment even though they don't have a problem financially. So uh, what is your recommendation for the in startup companies or uh, entrepreneurs who don't think that they need money because they have enough um, profits uh, they are making at the moment? And yeah, what is your advice for them? Yeah, of course, the, the, I think the both right. The, the startup and the company who never take the outside money and control 100% by the CEO and the founder by themselves is also the good way. Also the startup who can leverage the uh, outside resource and the venture capital from day one and uh, keep going uh, towards the IPO. So they, uh, uh, I want to say that some of the founder and the startup who misunderstand that the, if the outside investor like, uh, like the venture capital get into their company, uh, sometimes the decision make, business decision making or day-to-day -day operation, uh, maybe they sometimes need uh, some sort of advice and get the approval to do this. But this, I think, is uh, some sort of the misunderstanding between the even the uh, the, the startup the, who receives the money uh, from the venture capital, but venture capital never ever the control the company. Uh, they just are taking a small percentage of, of the startups, and uh, most of the cases the uh, the its founder and the CEO who control and drives the company. Investor sometimes can be the free uh, resources to make a connection to the investors for the further round and the connection to the talented people, connection to the exit in the future. I think the really believe to the, uh, this really the competitive the market in the every opportunity the, to leverage the resources like uh, venture capital is I think a really efficient and effective way for a startup to grow. And also the, sometimes the, uh, these founders misunderstand that as well, that the, if the founder and the CEO should be okay to the, if the, the startup can do a steady growth um, and also sometimes no growth for the long timing, but thinking about the employee side, they are looking for the opportunity to grow as a career, especially for the young people. Uh, they also the, have to care about the uh, growth is sometimes a really is, uh, necessary, not for the investor, but for the uh, employee as well. Some startup companies, as you know, um, they're just burning money. They just continue to get the investment but then uh, they are not exactly um, making profits. 
they just keep on spending the investment money. Uh, I'm not going to say the names of the companies, but as you know, this, there are some unicorn companies or some big companies. Uh, they are actually, seems like they are doing great. Uh, when, it, when you see the numbers, they are just in the deficit. They are in the red. But then we just wonder why investors keep investing in them. Is it because they believe that oh, this company is just struggling a little bit, but at the end of the day, they are going to get the, all the market share? Or without changing any of uh, their business strategy for the star company, uh, is it really good idea to um, invest in that company continuously? Uh, it's a really the typical discussion the investor and the founder have been doing and doing right now as well. The, my opinion is the, especially for the tech sector and the internet companies, the, because of the, the, this type of the startup and the business model uh, has the strong the network effects. This effects accelerate the growth and more. So then the, in the end, the, the, this type of the business and the market opportunity tend to be the situation like a winner takes all. That's why the uh, founder and the investor side, the, it's really that makes sense to keep burning the money and the collect the data or user basis as fast as possible without carrying the profit and uh, without, without carrying the how much money they spend. So that I think is one of the uh, successful formula. Uh, the startup and the, who has a business model like this, but at the same time, there are some sort of the misunderstanding or misguiding thing that the the business model and the startup who doesn't have any uh, mechanism of the network effect itself, but they keep burning the money like the business model, they think similar to, the, let's say, the uh, GAFA or some sort of successful uh, tech giants. But in the end, they're taking an example like uh, VBAC and the others. Uh, it doesn't have any network effect inside their business model, but keep burning money. In the end, the everybody just notice this, oh, this doesn't work if they keep burning this type of money. So that's, uh, I think, the two different uh, business model we have to classify, uh, discuss separately. That's my opinion. And also, the, given this the uh, COVID COVID nineteen situation, the I think that even the uh, tech giants or unicorn company who are allowed to keep burning money before, but the, there are some sort of the symptom the tendency that the investor do much more care about the how they spend how a startup spend the money of the from the investor more than before uh, investors are reluctant to invest in tech companies sometimes because uh, they believe that okay if i invest in this one tech company but still this tech company seems to be okay but if we want to make uh, like a really marketable and sellable uh, technology actually it requires a little bit more complementary uh, technology. So what I have seen is that when I uh, talk with a star a star company tech star companies with the uh, investors, even though their technology is really good, they the investors think that this technology is just a part of the uh, more complete uh, technology. They have to be there. So. Um, in the end, actually, they decide not to invest in that tech company, even though tech, technology itself is really good. Uh, yeah, that's true. The, the, I really agree with you. Uh, I think the tech company, the, even if the, they have a really good uh, cutting edge technology in the part of the whole, this time sometimes doesn't work much for, the, for their growth. The, every time, the every opportunity, I think is the end to end. Uh, the, I think it's important how we build up the end to end value chain 
from the client to the uh, this startup service sub, uh, providing. So the what kind of the uh, relationship the startup to build up with the platform if there is. Also the have to care about the new market entry from the outside, uh, from the, uh, the big player next to the market. So the startup has to always care about the their value or value proportion will not be squeezed out by the uh, player next to the product. So the, I always uh, the make uh, some sort of the advice and the guidance to the, uh, if there's a really good technology in the middle, I always try to uh, guide a startup to make an end-to-end -end value chain uh, well in the specific business opportunity. Sometimes when uh, startup companies meet with uh, invest companies or investors or VCs, uh, they hear that, oh, I really want to invest in you, but I really hope that you can find the anchor investors or lead investors. And when they actually the investment amount is really huge, and then uh, the fellow investors really want to have like lead investor, uh, it makes sense. But it's also sometimes it feels like that they are not so sure about this company because this uh, so-called uh, follow uh, investors also have enough fund. So I don't see the, why they need a lead investor or anchor investor, but then, but anyway, they say that, oh, I really want to invest in you, but I want to be the follow investor. Could you find an anchor investor or lead investor? Uh, can you share your opinion about this? I think it's the, uh, there are many variety and the type of the investor out there. I don't think it the uh, the minority investor who always need the uh, lead investor are uh, not good. The sometimes the minority uh, and the minority investor who are most likely the do this because of their let's say the allowance for the how much risk this investor can take. So the, sometimes the, uh, the, let's say, corporate investor and the investor and uh, the financial institutions uh, need to have some sort of the uh, responsibility to explain to why they invest into the specific startup. But again, the back then is the uh, startup investment is always risky and very hard to justify why they invest in this. So the based on the situation is that such a minority investor are from such a really the digit and big corporation. Uh, they I understand that they need sometimes sort of the uh, way to explain of the validity why they invest. The only the good way is uh, there is uh, already in the lead investor out there, price is set, then they, they decide to invest. So I think this is all about the ecosystem thing. So the yeah, uh, we are not that kind of investor, but the I don't deny the their existence of our. On the other hand, the one of the I think is the uh, behavior of an investor I don't like is the uh, the investor said the some sort of the amount of the money uh, startup should raise. Let's say you need to raise uh, 10 million US dollars for this round. If a startup can raise a 10 million US dollars investment, then they, uh, within this term, I will make a 2 million investment. Such type of a behavior uh, sometimes uh, really limit the flexibility of the founder how much they can raise because the uh, fundraising activity is uh, really the moving target. So even this uh, company uh, think that they committed earlier, but it's not the commitment in the end sometimes. It's not, I don't think it's a really good behavior for an investor to keep doing. Let's talk about the due diligence. As you know, some startup companies say that, oh, the revenue uh, size or 
they talk about also they are doing great. But once you start due diligence, sometimes it actually is not the case. Uh, so it's about their uh, integrity or honesty. And but then some people are actually confused with between the candor or marketing because they think that they are doing just doing marketing, but they are not really exactly conscious of that they are kind of lying. So um, due diligence is so important. So what do you think that they have to prepare for the due diligence? Well, I think is the most of the cases, the investment decision is already made before the due diligence. So the, for most of the founder uh, think uh, the, for succeeding the fundraising activity from the investor, I think is the besides the DD, uh, the firstly the the business model and the traction and the assumption to the market why investor has to bet in this opportunity. This type of the validation and the mutual understanding between a startup the founder is much important than the DD. So that if the uh, without the agreeing this type of the direction in the future between the investor and the founder, but the investor wants to get into the DD. This sometimes in investor doesn't commit any investment decision sometimes. So the, that's the founder has to care, startup has to care before they uh, allow the investor to do the DD. That's my opinion on the experience. I have seen some investors, after they invest in uh, this startup company, they visit them like on a regular basis. And it's not like they're giving the really constructive uh, advice. They just keep pushing them. They actually almost like abusing them. And I have seen it uh, in person. On the other hand, some investors also, it's like, the opposite. They just uh, let the startup company just do whatever they have to do. Is they ask them to submit a report on a regular basis, but it's not like they push them too much. But I understand uh, both of them actually in a way because after you invest in the company, you have to wait long time to get your ROI. So uh, in a way, I understand. But on the other hand, uh, if you just let the startup companies just do what they have to do. Okay, it's good, peaceful, but I'm not so sure also that whether it's really the best way for investors, even if mm. the investors have a good network. For example, they can help them, but they don't do it. They're just, okay, it's your business. I invest in you, I trust you, just do what you have to do. And mm. then uh, some, some investors that could try to like, micromanage the startup company. So. In a way, I think either way, uh, it seems like the pros and cons for both of them. Maybe incubate a fund, you must have some uh, policy or like a direction for this one also. I think the, uh, again, the, this is both right, the, but the, uh, it depends on the stage when and how investors support a startup. The initially, the, of course, the, uh, the investor side sometimes has more expense the managing the startup in terms of the uh, how the startup to be organized and the, how to do the marketing, how to do the hiring, and the, how to develop the product, etc. It's definitely the startup who is having the driving seat of the company. So the uh, the investor should really respect the startup and guide them to the uh, right way to to go, but the, if the uh, the initial stage pass, the founder side and the startup ha side has more deep experience of the doing business, and also the once the uh, startup just pass to the initial uh, seed stage phases, the startup side uh, who knows the customers better, who has the data more than the investor, of course. And uh, they can now in the stage of the, uh, they uh, really uh, grasp the necessary data for the decision making in marketing, hiring, and the organization, the product development, et cetera. So that the gradually the investor should step in 
uh, away from the uh, more day to day or the week by week, week by week, the operation style and more to be the advisor or more to be the outside networker for a startup. So the, uh, again, is an important thing is the, uh, that's kind of the mixture and the combination. But I think that how the investors should uh, support a startup should be different by stage by stage. And also the, how the difficult the startup uh, is or how successful the startup is. The way an investor uh, support a startup should be different by the timing. I know that you have been talking about what we have to think about uh, when we try to get the investment. But if you can summarize that, what kind of strategies would you recommend to SMEs or startup entrepreneurs hoping to attract investors? The founder and the startup, the definitely the uh, better understanding. The investor is not the expert in the every angle of, of the business opportunity. So the, even the, it's the uh, obvious to a startup and a founder but the, uh, I think the uh, startup uh, need to uh, explain to the industry structure and the problem and the how the startup can solve this uh, to us, the, each of the investor uh, and the potential investor, the, the startups will see uh, one by one in, the, in detail. So the, sometimes it's the, uh, that's really obvious thing to uh, both of the investor and the founder's uh, relationship, but the, some founder and the startup keep talking to an uh, investor what they know about this, but never listen or never uh, recognize the, whether the investor fully understand what they are speaking up. So the, I think the ones, the, the most likely the investors pitch, uh, the most likely the founders pitch and the presentation to the investor is the uh, sit in the sit like this, right? But the, if the founders speak and the investor listen, uh, this time it's really hard to uh, agree and hard to see the same direction. If the both see the same direction for the future, uh, definitely the uh, entrepreneur and the startup can get them get them to attract the money from the investor one of the important uh, data to show to the investor and the potential investor is the uh, founder uh, definitely the better explain to the fast movers movement and behavior uh, because uh, most of the startup the product and the service are really new fast user and the really active user of a startup service and the product is uh, looks very weird to uh, normal people. This is a uh, real, I mean, the user who can break the market in the future. So sometimes we just, uh, they are sometimes called a geek or otaku in Japanese or some, the, let's say, super shoppers, whoever. But the, they look weird from the normal person, but uh, they are the, I mean, the, Definitely the uh, future user coming from the, uh, I mean, the 20 years after or 30 years after. So that's, that's I'm seeing that the uh, startup definitely the expand to the fast mover and active users movement of the uh, startup company, the service and the product. That's, I would like to stress for that. I, I know that uh, Incubate Fund has been investing not only in Japan, in other countries also. When you try to invest in the companies, startup companies, you know, abroad, did you have any issues with uh, system or you thought that you, you might have thought that uh, what if this country has this uh, better system then I would have invested more? Or if you have that experience, maybe you can share them with us also. That since the viewers, yeah. actually also the policy makers in our 21 member countries, so if you can um, make any recommendation to the government level that what kind of uh, policies can be helpful to the startup companies in boosting the innovation system. Uh, I know this is a little bit broad question, but based upon your hands-on experiences, um, you can just share 
any uh, experience, that'd be great. The first point uh, I'm addressing that the I'm I've been investing a lot of the uh, markets and different countries. The thing that I'm feeling that basically the business model and the talk uh, I discuss with the founder are not big difference between the market by market. The I'm talking about the SaaS business in the India and the medical service in the US. The same same topic the I, I'm talking with the uh, founder in Japan as well. Uh, most of the discussion I do with startup and founder are the similar and the same. But on the other hand, the uh, difference is the uh, ecosystem of the venture capital cycle and the uh, founders community itself. For instance, in Japan, the venture capital community is work like a village. The most of the cases, uh, every venture capital know each other for the everybody. And also the cycle towards IPO is the well uh, structured. Uh, there's a TSE, Tokyo Stock Exchange, uh, Mazas, the new new market for the startup is a well established uh, venture capitalist and accountants and the writer, auditors and uh, people in the stock exchange are well connected to the uh, knowns each other and also the shares of uh, promising deal each other. So that kind of really dense community I'm seeing in Japan market. But on the other hand, the uh, Southeast Asia and uh, India, they, of course, uh, there, there are very strong the venture capital community, but the still the very new to the market or the sometimes uh, uh, India market looks uh, very immature, but the, in reality, it's a really mature market because uh, there's a Sequoia and Axel Partners and a top firm like from the USBC is the uh, taking more important role in this market. So the most of the uh, trend and the expense that doing venture capital business in the United States come directly to India for instance. But on the other hand, the uh, there's no IPO market, a strong IPO market yet in India. So the, I'm seeing this is a difference is the ecosystem, the market by market, but the uh, founder and the investor uh, like me is uh, has to, uh, let's say, tailor ourselves to the uh, ecosystem of the market. This is, uh, I think, the a challenge for a startup and the venture capital who are doing a business globally uh, in the uh, different market. But the overall, there's nothing different. And the talk and the challenge and the enjoyness of the startup life and the venture capital life market by market. Uh, more often than not, as you know, the regulations stifle innovative startup companies who are entrepreneurs in sometimes Actually, it happens also in Korea uh, a lot more than we know. Regulations are actually a very important, I think. Exactly. The, I, I totally agree with you. The, uh, the policy maker in, and also the governor in the, every market is uh, quite important to spur the innovation and uh, develop the ecosystem on the, each market. The, for instance, the, in Japan's market, is the METI and the other policy makers is uh, really, really supportive to uh, help the startup to create the actual cases. For the policy maker side, uh, they can utilize the startup as an actual test bed and the cases to the uh, innovation to be uh, deployed and established in the real world. For instance, the, uh, if there's a really, uh, if the, the policy maker can think of the new deregulation or a new type of the technology innovation, they want to see in the market. Even though they, they encourage the big corporation to do this, uh, sometimes, uh, especially in Japan, uh, they are very slow to move sometimes. But startup side, is, uh, they can take a smaller uh, opportunity is uh, good enough. So the cutting edge cases or the how they deploy the technology into the actual society, sometimes they could be the really good uh, test cases to show to everybody. So I think it's the startup, it's the uh, policy maker side and the startup side is uh, quite a win-win situations. Uh, the policy maker want to see the actual cases to be uh, deployed in the real world, real world. 
And the startup side is uh, really uh, good to work together with the policymaker to uh, encourage the deregulation or create the open space opportunity together. Let's say the such discussion uh, will be really welcome to the startup side as well. Uh, definitely, the, I believe that such collaboration will be seen and the various, various uh, opportunity, the space, outer spaces, or the automotive the driving, smart city, medical, biotechnology. Yeah, this type of the thing is already happening in the, I think, the market. Uh, before we close, I would like to ask you how you manage your mental health, because it can be also very stressful. So do you must have your own like a way to relieve your stress or maintain your good health? Mentally, the, I don't do anything, but the, for the spare time, the weekend, the, I'm actually the tri-athlete. And uh, I swim, I run, I bike. The, this is the biggest uh, mental relief to, for forgetting everything of the stress of the venture capital work. And also, the, I spend uh, much time for the caring the kids is the uh, relieving the stress, I guess. Uh, Homa-san, if you have any closing message for startups and viewers. The, thanks for the listening. Uh, back to the first question, the, I think the, the, where the innovation is happening and the startup could be, the, I think, the driver for the innovation. I, I strongly believe in this, in the only the outsider and the challenge that could be the innovation for the future and the next century. But the startup is not all about the startups. So the startup need also the help from the finance people and the investor, also the people working for the startups. And uh, the client, they can just uh, support the startup the innovation. And also the policy maker allow the startup to play in the some uh, certain uh, industry and the business opportunity. I think everybody, the, in a sense, the, can be related and uh, already related to uh, startups. So the, I think it's, uh, this is the, all about the, how we think of the, the good society will be developed. The startup is uh, one of the way, but the startup needs the help from the, uh, all the people. Mm. So, Homa-san, thank you so much for your precious time. I know that you are very busy, but still, you took some time for us and for our viewers. I really appreciate it. Viewers, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And you know that if you don't subscribe to our channel, you are going to miss out on a lot. So please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Yeah, uh, Homa-san can uh, continue to help as many startups as possible at the early stage. Uh, let me thank you very much. Have a nice day to you.